Welcome back to the Distributed Control and Automation Framework video series. In this video, we're going to take a quick walk through the shipping example that comes with the framework itself. Let's look at LabVIEW. If we go to the example finder, so help find examples, and if we then search for the keyword decaf, you'll find the temperature controller example project. Let's open this. What this gives you is a fully configured, able to run system that has a number of different modules, including several custom modules, along with all the necessary mappings in order to see the system in operation. We're going to walk through the configuration first, and then take a look at what the LabVIEW code necessary looks like here. And I'll show you what you would need to change in your own projects to achieve a similar result. First, let's go to the configuration editor. That's going to be under Tools, Decaf, Launch Standard Configuration Editor. There we go. And next, we're going to open the simulated system configuration file that comes with the example. When we open up the example configuration, you'll find a PC target and a Compact Rio target, each with an engine defined. Under each engine, there's a series of modules. These define the behaviors of the decaf system on that target. Let's take a look. On the PC, we have a UI reference module. This module will connect a pre-built LabVIEW front panels, controls, and indicators with tags in the background of the decaf engine. These tags can either be data sources or data sinks, writers or readers, of data that gets produced elsewhere. We also have a UDP broadcast module, which we'll talk about a little more in a moment. This is what connects the two engines together. On the Compact Rio side, we have temperature controller logic here. This is what's going to determine if this amount is higher than this, turn the fan on, turn the fan off, etc. This will be the temperature chamber model itself. So this is what's going to determine how the uh, temperature chamber actually responds. Rather than having a simulated model like we have here, you might want to replace this module with something that reads and writes the actual hardware I.O. mod points uh, on the system itself if we had a real system in front of us. Now you don't actually need to have a compact Rio to be able to run and test this configuration. It's actually possible to drag an entire engine from one target over to another. So at this point, we would have one target PC with two separate engines that will run on it. And these UDP broadcast modules are still linked to each other. There's something we'll need to do before we can run this, however. And that's we're going to need to set up this send to address to actually match the IP address of your particular system. So this happens to be my IP address you'll need to set it to match yours. So right now they're both sending to the same address. Normally what you would do in this case would be to simply have the send to address be the other target in the system. Okay. I mentioned the UI reference module. This can, has the ability to take in an already built user interface VI such as this one. And if we take a look at the block diagram, it's not a very complex block diagram. We handle all of the mappings, we handle all of the communications, we handle all of the reaching into the VI and getting and setting the values. All that you need to do to make a UI for a decaf system and for the simplest use cases is just make it look nice and show the data that you want. This can then configure the set of tags based on the controls and indicators it found in that VI. The UDP broadcast module, it's paired with the other one in the system. And here what we have chosen is these are the tags that we're reading from the models. These are map over here, lamp and temperature, lamp and temperature. These are the indicators on our user interface. The controls, P, I, and D values, fan on, the set point. These are items that are being sent to the other engine. Remember, tags in DCAP are one way only. There's a single writer to each of these. 
you'll find the reverse configuration exists here because this is the receiving side. So anything that was two external engine here is in the from external engine on this side. They're paired together. Now the temperature controller logic takes in all those configuration items and handles the logic that we need for our system. We separate the logic and the model so that it's possible to simulate the temperature chamber just by switching out this module right here. Pretty simple. So let's take a look at it working. First I'll save this. Next I'll go over here to our project. And what this includes is the host main VI, which is just this. And this is almost identical to what you'll get if you create a new basic execution template sample project. We provide all of the engine code needed to launch the system, run it, and monitor its state. This is that user interface VI. We include it on the diagram so it will get launched. And we set the VI properties on this view such that when it actually runs, it will be show front panel when called. That way when we run our top level main VI here, this user interface will come up and pop to the front. We also have the static include module. Static module, the host module static includes. This is a generated file that contains a class constant of each of the different modules that's being used in our configuration. Here, what we're doing is looking at the configuration file as given to us with this path, loading in the engine configurations for any engines under a target called PC. Remember that we named our target PC here. If this was named computer, this target alias would need to be called computer, for example. Here, we launch and run the background VIs that actually comprise the decaf engine. We're going to do this once per engine discovered under this target. So in the case of our system here, one, two engines would get instantiated. This for loop would run twice and spawn two Rantron copies of the decaf engine. Then the rest of this loop is dedicated to simply monitoring the status of the two engines, in our case, and providing a means to stop the system. Once we've stopped this, we can send a stop message to our engines to shut down as well, and then close out our references like we always should. Let's run it and see what happens. Just going to hit run here. There we go. And as you can see, we have live data coming in to that user interface VI. We didn't have to write any UI code whatsoever. The UI module will handle all of that for us. We can change our set points here. We can see a resulting change in the system. Turn on the fan, drop our set point, and we should pretty quickly see that temperature come on down. And down it comes. That gives you a quick overview of how decaf operates. If you'd like, you're free to explore the example yourself. Now, if we actually had a Compact Rio to run this code on, it's a simple matter of taking the simulation that we want to run, or the actual code later on, dragging it down to Compact Rio target, and then having a Compact Rio target in our system where we have the Compact Rio main VI, just like we have the host main up here. And the code that we provide in the sample, in the example project here, the Compact Rio side of the system is going to be the other sample project that we have, and that's the engine execution service, which gives us a few more options to peek and poke inside, reload the configuration file without restarting the system, and such features like that. All you'd have to do is, if you had a 9068, set the IP address here. Or if you didn't have a 9068, instantiate a new Compact Rio target in your project and drag these three items into that target. The other thing to keep in mind, if you wish to run and deploy code on a remote Compact Rio, within the configuration editor on the Tools menu, there's a Deploy tool. It's very important 
that you save your configuration and then hit deploy in the deploy tool to actually send the configuration file over to the remote system. If you don't send the configuration file over to the remote system, it doesn't know that you made any changes and it'll still behave as it did the last time you remembered to do this. To set the IP address of the remote system, keep in mind you're going to need to set it here. This setting should match whatever you have in your project or your actual physical system. And remember, set the correct target type here. If you have a 9068, a 9067, a single board Rio, etc., you have a Linux RT ARM target. If you have a 9033, 9035, 9038, etc., you have a Linux RT X64 target. Our Intel based systems are this type. Our ARM based systems, the SOM, the SP Rio, the lower end compact Rio, uses an ARM type. And the only reason that's important is sometimes we have external libraries that we need to load. It's very useful for us to know which libraries are supported and which ones are not uh, by setting that here. As a next step, you can also take a look at the not just the simulated system but the full system. If you open this configuration, what you will find is that we have much more complex uh, code in place to actually handle direct I.O. out to uh, Compact Rio modules. So instead of having a simulated system, we have a real system in this case. And what you can also see uh, by running through the example on your own, the identical code on the host side, the identical code on the Compact Rio side can be used to run both of these configurations. The only difference is for the Compact Rio target. You'll need to regenerate this includes file to let it know which different modules need to be loaded, which source code needs to be there at runtime. That's the only change you'll need to make to be able to run the actual system with a much more complex set of modules. So one of the nice advantages of decaf that you can have the same off-the-shelf uh, LabVIEW code to call any number of modules in a very flexible fashion and make changes here without having to worry about detailed changes over on the LabVIEW side. Thanks for watching. Come back again.